please stick around till the end. This next one that I'm going to show you is the one that pissed the hack out of me. I said, no, I need to conscientize whoever cares to listen because I do not think this is fair at all. Feels like a complete disregard of the consumer's feelings or something like that. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. Ah. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. C Chronicles is my name and I post fragrance related content on this platform. Now, if you're here for the very first time, please do consider subscribing and joining the family. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continued support. Kindly check out my second channel, C Chronicles Unscripted. On that channel, guys, I focus on my life outside fragrance reviews, but I have introduced Western Wednesdays where we just chit chat about fragrances. I thought to create that channel because this one has taken a niche direction where it focuses mostly on Middle Eastern fragrances. So if you want to see that other side of me, please check out C Chronicles Unscripted. If you look at the banner of C Chronicles Talking Sense there where you'll see my picture, just under that you will see a link that will take you there. Today's video is going to be a rant because I was triggered. Uh, today's video, guys, is going to be for those that do not catch feelings. If you catch feelings, you're probably not going to like this video because it's unfiltered, right? I was about to do a review of Kanjar Niche Emirati by Latafa. And then I thought, mm, no. Okay. Um, I have been trying this fragrance now. It's close to a month that I've had it in my collection. And I did realize how eerily similar it is to another fragrance that they have in their collection and i thought to myself well instead of doing this review i'm still going to give you a review by the way but i thought instead of giving you this uh instead of doing this review let me come here with a rant uh guys there is a trend that i've noticed especially with the middle eastern fragrance houses the clone houses and in particular i'm gonna say latafa but i'm gonna touch on the other ones and this trend is giving scam vibes it's giving total disregard to the consumer and i'm gonna break it down okay uh so that you get my point exactly so first of all let us start with replication disclaimer these Big houses, the actual houses, Latafa, uh, Paris Corner themselves, Fragrance World and stuff, they have never reached out to me, okay? And I am coming as an unbiased person. I am coming, guys, with my opinion, my unfiltered opinion. I have never been sponsored and I do not own a shop. So all the information that I come with here are my opinions based on my feelings and thoughts, non-sponsored, non-biased, okay? I have bought each and every fragrance out of pocket, save for the random times where I will buy fragrances or maybe a couple of fragrances and a company feels they want to throw in an extra fragrance just to thank me because I'm a reviewer or the isolated incident when Aroma Concepts reached out to me and they asked me to choose the number of fragrances that I wanted to talk about from the House of Paris. Cool. Now, first, I'm going to talk about replication, right? Uh, uh, by replication, I am going to kind of excuse some of these uh, companies because even in the Western uh, fragrance market, there is replication where, for instance, I'm just going to use Carol Nahira, Good Girl. I mean, bless us all. I always use Good Girl as an example. Uh, that DNA you will find coming from other companies, right? Where it might not be one on one, but you will kind of have like a semblance of that DNA, say, in some of these fragrances. Like there is the Jimmy 2, I want you, the dark bottle one that they released there is remnants of what you get from good girls so replication is normal okay and now if i'm to bring it back to the middle eastern houses uh talking of replication i'm just going to give these two as an example okay this is new from paris corner and this is rave now i bought this fragrance and i was so wowed by it because it's a beautiful pineapple and then i bought this one mainly because of the bottle and then i realized wait a minute it just feels like the same juice in two different bottles all right so that is just going to be speculation uh but i can tell you for sure these two smell, smell the same speculation in the sense that i don't know whether there's a huge factory 
that is making these fragrances because coincidentally they come out they actually come out at almost the same time and they're just branded you know differently so i do not know guys whether uh it is the fact that paris corner ha happened to have the same formula and uh, you know latafa had the same formula and then they just dropped them there and the thing about rave guys it does not claim to be uh, uh latafa outright uh but how i know it is a latafa is latafa has got a pamphlet where they have some of their sub brands there so there is rave there's maison alhambra uh there is um astaf adults alfren uh there is verve all of those are subsidiaries of Latafa. So I do know that this is a subsidiary of Latafa. How they work that out, I do not know. It's not my business. It could be that they franchise and some company gets into that franchise. They pay and they say, oh no, Yara is doing so well. Could you do it for us? You know, I'm talking about the ones on the pamphlet, guys. Don't misquote me. I'm not saying Paris Corner is part of Latafa. These are two different companies, at least to my knowledge. I am just saying when it comes to the ones on the pamphlet for Latafa, maybe that's what happens. However, why I thought to, you know, point out on this replication uh, that can be somewhat annoying, especially if a fragrance feels one on one as though it's just been rebottled in another, another bottle is because of the following. Uh, Latafa released the Latafa Pride collection, right? Uh, this I am just doing a compare and contrast with Paris Corner and no pun intended to Paris Corner. Remember, I said these companies can jump on the bandwagon especially if a juice is doing you know so well or whatever they do have the right to jump on the bandwagon and also make the most out of that uh, sort of like brand say for instance how angels share ended up being a fragrance that was kind of replicated by a lot of companies uh but it is the timing that makes it a bit questionable that mm, okay latafa drops the latafa pride collection the second edition they give us all sorts of fragrances i come across affection i'm so happy to smell that and then boom paris corner releases kahir pistachio which smells exactly like that the companies that uh i'm gonna say at least to my knowledge do not do it that way. I uh, say maybe a Marv, Swiss Arabian, Afnan. They take their time. You know, when it comes to some of these releases, though popular or not, I think I can almost say I have never come across an Angel Share clone from the House of Amarf, if you know what I mean. They kind of do their own thing. Yes, they have given us a Delina exclusive clone. They've given us a uh, Crit Silver Mountain Water. Uh, they gave us a um, Baccarat Rouge 540, but that was at their own pace. So it didn't seem as though you know you could have those like oh sixth sense telling you mm, are these guys really maybe correlated or something like that now this is not exactly what this video is about so please stick around till the end i thought to make this video because i am tricked so latafa has all these sub brands maybe it's a franchise and the franchise then says oh we, we like yara could you do could you do yara for us but the consumer is the one that's suffering the most in all this decision making in for instance astaf gave us a uh kasuf white extract that's exactly like yara guys exactly no difference is there and they are a subsidiary of latafa now remember because some of these fragrances are not available for you to test most of us just blind buy and then you blind buy that kasuf and you think oh, i've just found myself a new fragrance that looks nice there and then it turns out to be another yara so enough said when it comes to to that this rant guys is mostly to do with the replications amongst the house or within the house of Latafa themselves. It's almost as if they really don't care about the consumer or they're leveraging on their popularity and just saying to themselves, we're just gonna take the same juice and keep re-bottling it in different bottles under the label Latafa and it's going to be the consumer's problem which I feel is something that will soon catch up with them if not some people have already caught up to it that mm -mm. the latest disappointment from my part was with the Latafa Pride collection last week uh, if it's not last week it will be maybe 10 days ago but it's very close to last week I came with these two fragrances I was at pains to explain to you the differences and because I love fragrances pushed myself to decipher the differences yes it's a late lighter take of this but vintage radio as well as almond neshama guys are fragrances that you do not need you don't need both 
if you're looking for an initial paragon clone what i would say is maybe get this one uh they smell very close so if you blind bought these two they showed up at the same time you would be disappointed just like myself uh, i was you know one of the lucky ones to get the little minis but what uh i don't know whether it's the tougher now or it's the distributors these minis are very hard to come by so i didn't really feel cheated as as much uh in terms of the pocket i felt cheated in terms of the juice but i didn't feel cheated in terms of my pocket because i said oh well the other one was a mini so anyway it's an eye opener but imagine if you had bought full size of both and they turn up to smell the same they both are cloning initials paragon these two were released almost at the same time or maybe two months apart or something like that so that's why i said it kind of feels like a complete disregard of the consumer's feelings or leveraging on popularity thinking ah oh, they would not catch up with it as long as it's latafa you know they'll just jump on the bandwagon and 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 socially now this next one that i'm going to show you is the one that pissed the heck out of me okay personally i'm speaking in my own capacity guys i'm not saying go don't go and buy this this is the niche collection uh the emirati blah 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 you know the ones that are coming in the vinti bottles i was one person who came here and i said i would love the whole lot even if it means it takes me three years to complete the collection because i just felt because i love letafas i would love you know to have the special ones I thought this collection was going to represent Latafa's own juice. Am I saying all of them are not representing Latafa's own juice? No. Some of them could very well be standalones, but it was this one and the other one that got me thinking, no, Latafa, no, you can't do people like that. Okay. Now this Kanjar Nish Emirati, I've been using for a while. And I said to myself, Nah, well, I'm going to be the nice one here. I'm just going to come and talk about the differences between this one and Masa. And then, you know, try to explain to people whether they need both or whatever. And then, I, you know, I just woke up in the morning. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm not doing that. Why should I? I mean, why? Latafa themselves should have the courtesy to tell people why they're making fragrances like this. This is of the Latafa Pride collection that was dropped uh late last year and in the same booklet where you find the latafa pride collection they're advertising this uh niche collection and then the niche collection was dropped uh subsequently to the latafa pride collection and in that niche collection they're advertising more fragrances now i was lucky to get masa in a small size but this masa if you know is a guinea made clone it smells exactly guys like kanja Nish Emirati by Latafa. Kanja costs almost twice the price of that. Now, as if that's not enough, let us go back in time. Tawil is a fragrance that was introduced by Latafa. This has Guinea made vibes. I could come here, guys, with this one and this one say for instance i hadn't bought the kanja and then be at pains to explain to you the differences because i do get a little bit of differences there this one is ozonic it's fresh it's clean it's it kind of has that um metallic tone to it it's like a citric take to guinea made and then this one has got like a refined mango blah 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 that is wrapping up everything it kind of feels like an upgrade of this one but truly speaking Imagine as a consumer, you buy all these three, three fragrances blind bought and they turn out to smell the same guys. They all are cloning guinea mate. You will feel robbed. Why Latafa is doing this, I do not know. Okay, I honestly do not know because at this rate, it will make sense to just buy guinea mate if you wanted guinea mate you get what i'm trying to say so that's why i feel it is somewhat taking the consumer for granted or leveraging on the popularity uh or the viralness of the latafa fragrances on the social media platforms uh, to an extent of thinking okay we need to make them in the hundreds these guys will get confused along the way they will not know which is which and we don't care but as a company integrity is something that is very important okay because once you lose integrity you then get the side eye where people will start to think 
is it really worth it okay I have eliminated Tawil because with Tawil, I could somewhat tell you a little bit of differences there. I am wearing both these fragrances side by side. Guys, I cannot tell them apart. The only thing I can say about Kanja is it does seem to amp up a little bit on the aromaticness there. While this uh, uh, mango, you know, is, is, is a little bit, not too much, but it kind of rounds up the fragrance. But these two fragrances smell the same, both cloning Ginnamate. So you honestly do not need both. Now to add salt to injury. The final straw was, I said, I'm going to test some of these fragrances out because as for the niche collection, Hand on Heart, I really wanted it. I wanted something I'm going to display there, you know, to say, ah, maybe 10 years later, maybe after I've stopped you, you doing YouTube, I can say, oh, this is what was left of my Latafa collection. What Latafa maybe should have done with some of these fragrances is it just tell us that, uh, you know, these are like some of their, or, you know, existing fragrances bottled, but in special edition you know like how carolina herrera gave us that shoe and she gave us the same shoe in polka dots uh for those who blind bought it they were very disappointed to say this is the same thing it's just a you know a limited edition as in okay this is what's happening now those are the three i could show you but now let us go to the other ones that i, I do not have here they have a fragrance from again the niche emirati collection called khalid uh it it is it's it's in a shape of a body like a i don't know egyptian goddess kind of thing and it has a blue uh sapphire thing stuck on it there uh take note that it has the blue thing because that kind of bottle they did reuse i think two three times on the same niche collection khalid guys smells a lot like amouage interlude men okay minus of course the oregano note that I get from Amouage Interlude Men. I'm gonna excuse them because them as Latafa personally have not given us an Amouage Interlude clone. But in as much as I wanna excuse them, I'm gonna add that it's with a pinch of salt because Maison Alhambra, their subsidiary, gave us ethnic oud and that fragrance smells a lot like Amouage Interlude. And to top it off, our stuff came with their own rendition of Amouage Interlude Men called Interval. So those fragrances, guys, are basically coming off the same mother company. Uh, some are going to argue, guys, that that Khalid smells a little bit like a body seer, blah, 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 blah. In their excuse, I'm going to say maybe because they personally, Latafa, hadn't given us an, an interlude, men, then it's okay. But what about Niche Emirati Antique? What, what do you have to say about that one? Niche Emirati Antique, guys, smells exactly like Liam Gray. Liam Gray was dropped, if I'm not mistaken, not even six months ago. And what do those two have in common? They're inspired by Gris Chanel. So this is why I'm saying, guys, it just feels like, you know, uh, a company that is taking consumers for granted, or at least they should have a department that explains some of these things to people. Because looking at the niche collection, it kind of looks mental shortcut, like the creme de la creme that you'd love to add to your collection as a fragrance connoisseur, as a fragrance fanatic, as one of those frag crazy people. You would love that niche emirati especially from latafa and then it turns out that maybe you ran onto the bandwagon and you bought yourself that liam gray and it turns out to be exactly guys uh like that antique right uh why and remember i did say that some of these companies are doing it as well i mean uh, fragrance world has got their own but fragrance world is fragrance world okay so if for instance you bought that uh francic 63.55 and it turned out to be like liam gray you can excuse fragrance world because fragrance world is fragrance world if they're the same i don't know but I, for, as far as i know fragrance world is uh the same one that uh also owns fa paris but you can excuse them for being a different company but when it's being done by the same company you just feel robbed to an extent another one from their niche collection guys is called mogul fort one thing i did notice about latafa is they are now throwing people off with notes so if you take that pamphlet of theirs and read it and you go by that pamphlet and you run and you say oh they they, they have you know i've seen this this not pyramid um it it looks like this is going to be this and you buy it what you get is a different fragrance 
all together that does not smell anything like the you know the the, the one fragrance that you thought it was going to smell like based on the note pyramid mogul fourth smelt exactly like love don't be shy but the notes listed are exactly like those of menu et demi by fragrance du bois so say for instance you wanted to blind buy in your own line and you see or you got that pamphlet from somebody or from a previous uh fragrance that you bought and you you saw those and they match with menu et demi you would go and buy that only to have a fragrance that turns up you know smelling like love don't be shy again one thing I also want to say about this whole love don't be shy thing is Ansem Gold is a fragrance that we, we were given by Latafa. You can argue all you want that this does not smell like love don't be shy. It smells a lot like Oriana, okay? Oriana uh, by Parfums Dumali and I do agree guys. It's just the citrus, you know, the citrus take that separates the two. Love Don't Be Shy and Oriana have like a rating of a lot of people saying those fragrances smell the same. Now, what's the point of giving us a fragrance that's going to somewhat have some semblance to Ansem Gold? Okay, in the name of Mughal Fort, costing uh, twice as much. I don't know it could just be me guys but i just thought that i should conscientize another you. one i would like to talk about guys is toline it is also of the emirati uh the niche emirati collection at this point i'm not really you know even a hundred percent keen to to save up for this uh, collection and to purchase it because i do not want replication guys unless i absolutely love the fragrance toline guys smells a lot like lancome's oud bouquet albeit a little bit refined there but if you are an og of of Latafa like myself you follow what Latafa does you will know that they gave us these two fragrances built around that Lancome Oud Bouquet DNA now in case you guys are not familiar with these uh, two fragrances this is Oud Mood one fragrance that put Latafa on the market this one does not nail the refinement of Oud Bouquet but with this Sheikh Al Shayouk Lux edition they did do their best to make sure guys that it is refined and very close to that Lancome Oud Bouquet Maybe they need to do another Lancome Oud Bouquet kind of, you know, inspiration, despite the fact that this might be refined and bitter and coming in an odd looking, you know, shaped bottle and stuff like that. That is what I wanted to say. And just to wrap it up, um, I did bring Precious Gold. This is off Maison Alhambra. And I am saying this because it's off the Maison, Maison Alhambra is, is their house. And it's another one that could potentially trigger you if, for instance, you you had bought Yara Moi from them because Yara Moi in itself originally is a clone of um, Mark Jacobs' Perfect Intense. And then they, you know, gave us this one, which is of their sister company that dupes everything one on one, the bottles and whatever the, even the packaging looks similar. Uh, they gave us this one. But imagine if you had Yara Moi and you, you didn't have the information that Yara Moi is inspired by Mark Jacobs' per Perfect Intense. And then you went and you blind bought this and then you smell it and you feel, well, it smells the same, you know, and how much is Mark Jacobs' Perfect Intense? You will feel robbed in the sense that if you total these prices, they come up to not a saving, you know, to an extent, you know, for some of these fragrances. Say, for instance, uh, you had Vintage Radio, right? Vintage Radio in itself is not a cheap fragrance. Uh, this in its full size, I think it's about 50, 60 bucks. It depends on where you buy it from. Alna Sharma, uh, I'm going to cap it at around 30. Let's say they do have the Paragon clone in the niche emirati and the niche emirati collection is ranging between 85 100 bucks it depends on where you're getting them and you blind bought this you blind bought that and then you blind bought another one in another name which you didn't know was inspired by that initials paragon total the price you will find that maybe you'd have even spent more or maybe you're just ten dollars short of buying the real thing so it just to me feels like a complete disregard uh to uh the consumer's pocket it feels like an urgent need to leverage on the su success you know of the brand itself to an extent that they're making one perfume every minute and really not caring you know really really not caring it looks to me as though they're focusing on the bottles and the packaging 
not the juice. At this point, that is how it feels to me that you see me holding this bottle. You're going to say, I want that bottle. That's a nice bottle. And indeed it is. Let me show you how the bottle looks like. Indeed it is. Okay. If you look at the vintage radio bottle, it has nothing. She has nothing in common with this only to discover that no, it was just the bottle that they changed, but the juice is, you know, smells the same. So that's why I did think to say, okay, I'm going to come out with this, uh, you know, video because I talk about Latafa to say, guys, I think you need to maybe do things differently there because consumers are catching up on it and it would be sad, you know, to be a brand uh, that maybe people walk away from or maybe people get less interested in, okay, because as a brand, we did and we still do appreciate um you know, your, the quality of some of your fragrances, we appreciate that. But this whole replication, especially from the same house, rebottling and rebottling fragrances, uh, changing the bottles is really not cutting it, especially with the, the niche collection. That was, to me, that was just the final nail on the coffin because I just felt okay with the latafa pride i had been accustomed to the fact that even the first one did not have all originals it did have a few that were like their own take where they punched them up here and there so i had you know gotten accustomed to the fact that oh yeah well you know with the first latafa pride collection there were a couple of clones there uh although some of them were had a little twist here and there uh in the true latafa style way like for instance they gave us camera you can't call camera an exact dude of angels share but you can see where you know it's coming from and that sort of thing so with the second latafa pride collection i kind of expected that oh there's gonna be inspirations you know inspirations with a little bit of a twist there where you you will know that okay this is a bit like this but they took their own direction now to then drop a, a niche collection and do the customer like that especially with the first few i don't have all of them guys so i'm not gonna speak for the rest um i just feel guys it is something that um is not fair especially on the consumer's pocket am i saying i'm going to stop doing latafa reviews no i'm not going to stop but it is something that's just taught me to say unless i smell it uh or unless it's really really priced low then i would rather wait and uh, maybe even hear what others have to say otherwise i would end up with a bunch of fragrances that smell the same and then think to myself well i did not just buy lancome wood bouquet if i'm gonna end up with 50 or if i'm gonna end up with 10 fragrances from the same house that smell like lancome wood bouquet see chronicles is my name thank you so much for joining me today let's meet in the comment section where we'll obviously discuss more about fragrances do turn on post notifications guys on both my channels while you're at it that way you will get to be notified anytime i upload a video now like and share this one guys and remember that smelling good is a form of good manners cheers